we're doing eight knots here over the banks and Pietro is trying to get your video out it's busy with voiceovers Last time we took you to Rockland and El Ahout, did some scary cock sailing and attended a lobster yoga session. We are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. over his lobster pots as you can see but also some some seals so I think <laughs> they're trying to get to the lobsters in the lobster pots um, so we have nightmares about lobster these lobster pots getting out into our propellers and the lobster boats have nightmares of seals going into the lobster pots so <laughs> I think we both I have some nightmares. So there's no lobster pots. Let's go look what Pietro is doing. We invited the catamaran right there in front of us. Lamb shake. So we invited him for. So that, <laughs> it's just slow cooking now with just salt, pepper, garlic, and onions. No water added. And this is going to become a salad. This is supposed to be butternut, but I'm improvising. So this is sweet potato, beetroot goat smoked cheese and some sprinkles on top and then I'm making mulga pudding so Whoa. this is pudding stuff that's oh, going on this looks like on this side there's pudding stuff going pudding on. So. hopefully they're gonna like it it's a <laughs> traditional South African dish it's lamb shanks traditional South African and mulga pudding very traditional South African Malfa. with custard Get in contact with Pietro if you want to also come on board at one point. We just anchored here in Belfast. And for a change, it feels kind of warm. The right back is going to be very, very tough. was a quick stop over in Belfast where our friends on wind therapy had their wind legs replaced. <coughs> Records from early settlers recount tales of abundant lobsters in main waters. While always available to those who called Maine home, lobster was not originally a very popular dish. In fact, it was something that poor and working class people usually ate. But all that changed in the 1900s. Apparently, the Rockefellers built a summer home on Mount Desert Island, where they often hosted elite guests from New York society. It's rumored that a dish meant for the servants was actually served to these upper class guests, and they loved it. The Maine lobster industry is a part of the fabric of Maine's coastal communities, contributing more than one billion dollars to the state's economy each year. Then a light lunch before we get back to Sisu. Oh my golly gosh, goodness. But I can't open it. I try to open oh. it to get in. But if you look at this stain, then I don't know if I want to be in. <laughs> Just look at this. Yesterday we did not take the camera, we went to that little town somewhere over the rock over there. But today we have the camera, so today we can show you what we're going to do. So we are going maybe first to the Seal Island because I think the Seal Island will be underwater very soon. The American Seals. Don't worry, we're not going to do anything to you. 
Joe, 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 Joe. Or should I say, eat up, eat up, eat up. No fires. Please, no fires. We now here at the park, as uh, park, nice jetty, <laughs> and someone just jumped into this cold water. So which way are we going? This is quite nice. And then there is mosquitoes, lots of them. <laughs> so that shot was ruined. We tried. Now, Mazi, well, the whole colony attacked my leg. It yeah. felt like. <laughs> There's these horse flies as well, lots of them. Yes, like, and they fast. We brought beers with us, <laughs> but Trev, you're not going to believe this one. <laughs> Yeah, we walked around the island and we just couldn't find a space where there's no mosquitoes or horse flies or... It's just incredible. It's just too many. It is... For horse. <laughs> and we didn't put any insect repellent on, so... That is a mistake. So we, we need to still find a place where we can have our beer. Yeah. And check, we're already here. Like most other days, we ended off with a bride. But it is time to go, very gloomy. Now to get the anchor out of the mud. Very muddy. Check how my feet is looking. So that little town over there is Castine. This was, we anchored on this side and we anchored behind there. And if you look here, you can see the rocks here. It's not cool. Um, so we anchored now there. And two days before, before we anchored with our friends on that side, that's where Castine is. Lovely little town. So we're now on our way up the river, all the way to that X mark the spot. I had this brilliant idea of reefing the, the Genoa so I can actually see underneath it, and then the wind died. Look at that, it looks like a curtain. For the ones that I have the question in the mind, why don't I put the code D out? It would be, I think the code D in seven knots of wind will, will give us around three knots, four knots, and with the, with the um, current, we will do good. But, look at that. With that kind of clouds and the way it's shaped at the bottom, and with the rain that I can see over there, I'm not sure whether we will get one of those cold friends that just will eat us. And the moment they go into these long lines, Peter and I, we, we're not happy with clouds that going into, into lines, because all of those lines is almost like a, a, a front, that's a rolling front, and it might eat us, and if we have the big saddle out, and also between the lobster pots and you don't want to get a big sail entangled. As I put the camera down I got a notification from uh, the weather. Uh, I changed the name, it's now called Climb. You see that one next to Windy, Climb. So you see Windy and then you see Climb. The one that has this orange and green. So Climb just sent me an, an SMS, lightning, cloud to cloud less than 20 miles from you so <laughs> it is that system over there check in about one hour from now 
one and a half hours, two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, six hours, and it's past. So it's defrosting day today. You can see all the freezers are out. But wow, the rain is already here. And over there is even down in lightning. And it changed from lightning cloud to cloud to cloud to ground. I just got another warning and they said a strong thunderstorm was located near Camden, which is just over there. Um, hazard will gust up to 34 knots or greater with small hail. In fact, small craft could be damaged in briefly higher winds and suddenly higher waves. We had to drop all the sails, but it's okay because we're going up the Penobscot, Penobscot River. You can see it's like a real river. And the last river we've been up to was the Suriname River in Amazon jungle. So this is the bridge. Penobscot Narrows. So this is this bridge is higher than the Statue of Liberty. So it was at one point one of the highest bridges. So we came up that river beneath the new bridge over there. That's Fort Knox, not the one with the gold, <laughs> unfortunately. And this is Bucksport, pretty historical little town. And this river is so black, I cannot even see the other side of the. I cannot see the rudders here. It's just so black. And the weather is still gloomy. So we went on that side, but there's a one-way door. If we're inside, we might not get back to Tipex. So we need to find the other dock. So we need to go I think, all the way. Just next door, but it's all the way around. <laughs> this one looks better. <laughs> the clouds are not so good. So let's see this out. Here's a Leopard 46. The workhorse of the Leopards in the early 2000s. Very, very good boat. That plant with the stack over there was the first plant, I think in 1800s, for the plantation, the first mill. Uh, from the founder of the town, the founder of the town called Buck, something colonel, something colonel general, general colonel. And he founded this place and called it Foundation Plantation One, and he started that mill. It was recently, recently closed, and they had to lay off 270 workers, like in I think 2016 or something. We're walking here and it's like a, a little library. Take a book. No locks, nothing. Daniel Steele. Oh. Oh, I used to read Daniel Steele. <laughs> okay, that was it. And nothing is open. Not one. Oh, only the ice cream shop. So we are back on our way. Problem with small towns, they're closed. So we, we got our bicycles in Tapex and we're going to that side, but we need to ride all the way, all the way over that bridge 
all the way over that island to the other side of the island over that bridge just to get to Fort Knox and apparently there's still no money there Ping! You got mail! <laughs> this was a tough one <laughs> And she just carries on. Oh my goodness. I think I developed a puncture. Or maybe I'm just heavier. Oh, it's so busy. This is the US 1. The one highway that goes all the way from the northern border, I guess, to the southern border. That amazing bridge. And over there is Sisu. <laughs> Another one bites the duck. <laughs> Looks like we've made it. <laughs> the pyramids of Penobscot. Looks like a pyramid. Just check it out. Big granite rocks. You can shoot from that side or this side. Pretty cool. And there's a lot of them. Our old stall and Pietro can zoom in. These two cannons. Let me just make sure they don't point at Sisu. Nope, Sisu is fine. If the gun was here, then it would point straight for Sisu. So they show how to fire a gun, and this is this huge massive and just to give you some perspective <laughs> this is how monster big this thing is this is this is big yep. size does matter <laughs> in the dungeons Down, must go up. I cannot see it. We will have uh, an easy way to go up. But this is 3D. A beautiful battery or something. Look at this. We have a hole for cannons. So those big cannons can use hot shots so they balls in here, it runs down, big furnace, make them red, red hot, take that ball, put it into that cannon, and that was all done here. And I was always wondering about it, it is for the iron clads, so the iron clads, which replaced basically the wooden boats, couldn't be destroyed by normal cannonballs, so they had to do something, so if it's red hot, it seems like it will it will damage the, the cladding and this is it. Yep, they roll it all the way down here. <laughs> so so we in America you must go to the right of the circle. <laughs> Keep right. <laughs> the most beautiful steel bridge of 1931. And I said, a stunning modern engineering of achievement. But 
This is the new one. We know in the new age. So now it's a modern achievement. Just look at that. Oopsie. Huh, we, <laughs> we are back. How much? 11 something kilometers. 11.1. 11 11.1. So we're going to fold up the bikes, put it into Tipex. We did found the ball, but we didn't take any video. Yeah. I think no, there's I took, one, I took a video. one mobile video, but we found one open bar in this whole. 10, what 11 kilometers yeah. troops were briefly stationed at the fort during the spanish american war in 1898 but never saw military action and no one ever died there it is said to be haunted and has been featured on several tv programs Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please also remember to subscribe.